Ethan, that's it. All we have is Ethan. Fine. Mm-hmm. <coughs> okay. Did you guys all get one of these? No? Okay, um, we need to talk about drinks. Drinks. Um, you're going to need, you know, this for the, for the bends that you make on the wall out here. And really, any three point saddle, four point saddle, offset band where you want to know exactly where the top of that saddle or offset is going to be before you bend the pipe 
uh, you need to know what shrink is. So with a flat piece of pipe, if I turn this into an offset, the pipe itself is actually going to shrink up a little bit this way. So if this was 10 feet to here, by the time I measure this to this, it's going to be a little less than 10 feet, right? Um, so how do we figure that out? Um, you can bend the pipe. You can, but that would give you a shrink of only that offset degree and height. So in that instance, if you did this 45 degrees, and let's say that was six inches tall, and you measured it, you would have the shrink of 45, six inches tall. Um, but on the thing that I just gave you, the little uh, reference sheet, which Hang on to it because you can you're going to need it for the quiz. I'll just put it that way. Um, and the final. You calculate the degree. I can't hear you. So you calculate the degree and uh, you play the metrics out of it. Well, do you see a column on that reference sheet that gives you um, that gives you the hypotenuse multiplier for an offset, which we've talked about. Oh, the shrink constant. And then you have shrink constant. So, so that's 45 degrees of shrink constant is 0.41. That looks like about a 45 degree, just the way that I drew it. And then let's, I mean, I just set it so six inches. We'll call that six inches. So what is it? 0 0.41. The shrink constant for 45 degree is uh, 0 0.41. There's no number, there's no unit, it's just a ratio. So how you figure out shrink is you, you take the shrink constant times the obstruction height, so six inches times 0 0.41, what does that give you? So the shrink in this case would be 2. shrink constant times the height. Two this would be 0.41 times 6. What did you say it was? 2.46. 2. That means it's going to be just about 7.5 feet long. What's that 2.46 mean? If you subtract 2.46 from 10. Inches. Inches. All inches. Right. All right. So if, if there was a question on a quiz <clears throat> that said, what is the distance between A and B after that bend was made, what would your answer be? 10 foot minus 2.46 inches. Right, but what is that? 8.54. Nine feet. Nine feet. Nine feet. Minus two. Nine 12, nine you know, what's 12 nine minus 2.46? Nine and a half, just about. about nine, and a half 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 nine feet, nine and a half inches. Nine feet, 9.54. That would, that would be the distance between A and B. Why is that important? Number one, if you knew, if this was a coupling, so you're running pipe this way and this was a coupling, and you and you had um, a box that was right here and you measured that, you could, you could hit that coupling right on with a six inch bend on a 45. Um, number two, a lot of times we go over obstruction height. For,
this trough here, with a coupling sticking out. And then there's a, a pipe. I think it's actually on the, on the unit's trough. So we need to go up and over this pipe with a three-point saddle. So walk me through how to do that. Measure all the points of your coupling to the center of your obstruction. Yep, we need to know this distance. So the center of that pipe to here. This is not the same as the pipe that out, that's out there. So you, you're going to have to apply your measurements to your bend to figure out what it is. So from the end of the box or the inside of the coupling, whatever you want to call it, to the center, I'm going to call that 18 and a half inches. This is 18 and a half inches. What else do I need to know? Well, how tall it is? How tall it is? Both. Yeah, we need to know how tall it is. And um, I drew this a little wrong. What you're going to have to do is put a box offset in here. So it's going to offset down, run along the wall so you can put a support on it, and then come up for your three point saddle. So you put a little box offset in it, and then you're going to do that. Now, the shrink for this little box offset is going to be tiny. So we're not even going to worry about it. What degree bend is a box offset? That was covered last Wednesday, probably. Yeah, I hardly learned anything. I watched the lecture, but this one. There's two ways I told you you could do a yeah. box offset, you remember? No. Either on 10 degrees and you can measure it, or you can just give a little slap of tickle like I showed you. So out here on the wall, if you want to follow mine, I believe I did a 10 degree offset. That's, I don't know, you can measure it, do it however you want. But I would recommend that you do that one first. Because if that one does it, if you, if you take the time to do a three point saddle, might take you a try or two or three to get, oh yeah, okay, that's perfect. And then you go put that box offset in it and you jack it all up and you gotta start all the way over. Mm -hmm. So um, I will do that first on this 10 foot stick and then we'll do this. But now that we need, now that we know it's from the edge to the center is 18 and a half, we also need to know the height, right? So it would be from the wall to the top of the, Pipe. I'm getting. I'll call it three and three quarters. I'm just going to round it up to four to give myself a little bit of room to work with. So it's so going to be a four-inch height. When you're going over an obstruction like that, is it supposed to have clearance around the obstruction, or is it supposed to touch? It's all about looks. It's aesthetics, okay. right? If you got a big old whoop, you know, like. One like that, it looks like shit, right? It doesn't look like you know what you're doing. If you hug it nice and tight around that pipe and keep going. The other thing is you don't want it cinched down on that pipe so hard that a plumber can't come through and take that pipe out, right? Without jacking your shit up. So, yeah. Happy medium. Yeah, and the other thing is if there's any existing conduits, you want it to match that, right? So. And if you have an example of my bend for each one of those, just try to match that as best you can. Um, all right, so the distance is 18 and a half, which means our shrink is going to be I did that on a 30. <laughs> I shouldn't have. I should have done it on a 45. But that's okay. Let's just use 30. 30. Yeah, so what's the shrink constant of a 30? 0.27. Times 5. 4 inches height. 4 inches, yeah. 
So what is that number? One point oh eight. So our shrink is one point zero eight. I'm just gonna call it an inch. Um, that being said, where on my where on my pipe? My, so I have a flat piece now. Where am I gonna mark that pipe? Mark the center at nineteen and a half. So instead of going. 18 inches over making a mark for the center of our saddle we need to go over another inch we're going to add our shrink value because when we bend it it's going to shrink back an inch so i'm going to make a mark at 19 inches and then um, it's a three-point saddle so that's basically two two offsets plotted right up against each other so at 19 inches then i'm going to uh, make another mark over here and over here, and where are those marks going to be? How far apart? So I'm doing this on 30s. Eight inches. Hmm? Yep. So whether you do it by trig or by the multiplier, the distance between the marks is going to be eight inches. from the end of the pipe, this mark would be at 11 inches, and this mark would be at 27 inches. And for trig wise, you found the hypotenuse of the lengths of those? That's what you're going for? Yeah, well, let's solve that both ways. Yeah, your angle of 30 degrees and your four inches. That's trig, it's 30, this is four, So opposite over hypotenuse, the sine of 30 is 4 over 1, which means h is 4 over the sine of 30. And that ends up being 8 inches. The multiplier, the multiplier for 30 is 2. So you take the multiplier times the obstruction height, 2 times 4 is 8 inches. Let me, really, let me show you really quick where they get the multiplier for the shrink constant. All it is is a ratio of, um, in a triangle, I'm going to read 30s and 4 inches. All the shrink constant is is a ratio between the hypotenuse and the height. So I'll call that opposite. But the hypotenuse, if you, if you pivoted that down, it would end up right here somewhere. Right? If you took this and you went down, pivoted it down, you would end up right there. The shrink is this amount right here. That's shrink. Because where this was at before now ends up this smaller distance, that's how much that mark is shrunk by the time. So let's, let's do an example of that. Um, this triangle. This is 30. We figured out that this is 8 and this is 2. So what does that make this adjacent down here? couple different ways you can do it, but since we're doing trig in this class, let's figure it out that way. So figure out what A is adjacent. Step one, find the funk. You have your opposite and your hypotenuse, that side. Right, that's, that's using these two sides, so we want to find that. So all we have to do is pick one. We can use the eight or we can use the two. Which one do you want to use? Eight. eight. Okay. Eight is the hypotenuse. Yeah. So forget about this. Yeah. We want to figure out what A is. So find the funk. We have an adjacent and we have a hypotenuse. So what function are we using? Cosine. So what's the formula? Cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So A over eight. And this is 30. Yeah. So cosine of 30. 
a equals eight times the cosine of 30. What is a? 6.6 6 point, 6 point what? 9.2. Let's just say that. So A is 6.92. What is 8 minus that? 8 minus 6.92. 1.08. What is our shrink constant? 1.08. Whoa. See what I'm saying? So you don't even need the constants and multipliers if you want to do the math. If you want to know how much is that going to shrink by the time I bring this triangle? Just draw it up. Either way you do it, it's going to work out. All right, now to bend this fucker. Keep in mind, this is just an example. So you're, the, the process is going to be the same for you. This is the bottom one. It's actually on three quarter inch conduit, but I don't feel like bending three quarter in here. So I'm doing it on half inch. All the math is the same. So if I'm doing this on a half inch and you're doing it on three quarter, the math is the same. It's just a different size, right? Because the triangle doesn't change. It's just the size of the pipe. You don't get three quarters in here, something like that. You think, I, you think it'd be laughable when you're working with three quarter? More laughable. You just want to see me use my muscles. We want 11, 19, and 27. Wait a minute. Yes. Slap and take one moment. Everyone give me some foot stick. Oh, no nope. Oh, that's not nope. Okay, slap and take one. We should have done this out in the lab. Box offset. Going to show you, but I'll try. It's a little short, but I'm going. Um, okay, so then my measurements. We don't care about the shrink for that. It's going to be like a sixteenth of an inch. So it is better to do that. Uh, you do that first. After do that first. That. So you you train it. Yeah, because if you work. fuck this up, you can cut it off and do it again. Right, but if you bend that three-point saddle, which is some work, it's more work than that. And, and then you do that, and you fuck it up, then you got to start over. And again. even if it's merely like a very tiny, like very right? Right. Okay. What am I, What am I doing? Eleven, nineteen, and what? Eleven, nineteen. I am gonna have to shut that off because I'm gonna have to plug it and see what's going on. Woo, that's 
that's going to be a tough one. This one's going to be tough. You know why? Because I have to have the shoe facing towards the middle, which means I'm going to be bending it with this much leverage. I'm fat, so I can do it. Hey, you leave my mom out of this. Uh, yeah, you could. You just got to be careful you don't kink the pipe. start with your three point saddle in the middle. In the middle. In which mark? Nineteen. Well the middle mark, yes, but which mark on the fender? Oh, that's the part that I could not remember. I heard you say it. Uh, I was like, what? The what thirty. So if you heard me say it and you were like, what? You didn't make sense? No, I, I didn't remember it. What thirty <laughs> you don't remember it, there's two PDFs online on Blackboard that are super helpful. Go look at it. We'll walk you through everything. So I basically walk, watch another one of my lectures. One of my lectures. mark on the bender? Rim notch. Do you remember me saying a couple minutes ago, oh, I should have done that on a 45? You remember saying that? Yeah, you say what? Because the rim notch on these benders is for a 45. They don't have a 30 degree. So I'm going to have to, in my head, think about, all right, if that's the center of a 45 degree bend, I need to fudge this a certain way. That's the center of the 45, like bunch of this way, so just a hair. 30 inch to be very tiny. The 45, right? Well, do you remember what the rim notch is? Yeah. What that represents? Mm -hmm. If I bend a 45 degree angle on the arrow, that happens to be the center of that radius of that bend. That's what I'm aiming for. So 30 would be a little bit different. I believe it's a little bit that way just by looking at this, so I'm just going to give it a shot. Line it up so we don't have a dog. No dog. Okay, and then I'm on the rim notch, but fudged a little bit, and I'm going down to 30. Yeah. Too much, but that's okay. We'll fix it. All right. You motherfucker. No, I started on the outside mark. Why did you let me do that? That is not fixable. So I need to start over. What do electricians do when they mess up combos? Is there anything you can do with them? Throw them away. Throw it away. Scrap it. If you go to a job site, which is like a new building construction site, You'll see a giant pile of scrap conduit because it happens all the time. But the goal is to minimize that. Conduit's cheap, but it's not that cheap. All right, box ups. Here we go. 
I don't know. Slap and tickle. No, with a box offset, I just start at the end of the pipe. And too bad is that? If you were going to measure it, yes. It's downhill. Is it running downhill again? The end of it, yeah. You guys can see it back now. Let me start on the wrong mark this time. What mark did you start on the bottom the farthest away from the end? The middle one. No. What did you start in the middle one? Because you told me not to. I listened to it. the other thing. If I'm doing 30s, I need to go down to 60, not 30. Okay, 60. <laughs> and then shoe facing towards the middle and on the arrow this time. This looks like a this looks like a knuckle buster. I think what I should probably do is move that uh, that piece of strap where the pipe is at a little further away from the trough. We have more room to work with, and I will do that for you because I like you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh my God! You want to register by the No. Just see if I haven't tightened it down on the vendors. Just give it a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, we're only getting laughs out of it. Yeah, this happens, you probably haven't done. Yeah, how about you? What would be the problem? <laughs> see, we wanted to be a mistake.
could do that like that on the wall and start for that last one. Huh? Could you start like done the whole last bend on the ground? You can, it's just that you, you don't, you can't see the angle markings when you do that, right? Yeah. So what I did there, it's hard to, to describe, but I was just pushing down on the bender with my foot enough to bring that little bitty box offset off the ground when I was laying it level. Hey, so yeah, if, if you use like the little cheater bar, does that work? You can use a little cheater bar, that's what Will asked. Is that what you said, yeah. cheater bar? Yeah. yeah, you could. You could stick something on the end of that and pry it down, but you gotta be careful because it'll kink the pipe. So, yeah. Um, let me uh, check this and then let me show you what like real life you would do in that situation. Like to fix this, you bend up your box offset. So trying to change that angle. If I take this this one here and bend it up just a little bit more, so put just a little bit more bend into that, which is my floor bend, that would fix it. Would that be less of a pain to bend your um, the second bend in from the left on your box offset up? Would it be easier to do that? I guess if it were going out, like you still could do that. Let me line it up and then you tell me. Hey, oh, can you move it so, what me? Garrett is saying is, can I take this one and bend it up a little bit more? It looks like I can because I can really work with it there. Yeah, you can bend it Ended up pretty darn close to the center of that pipe on my center mark. That was just guessing. But I think what I'm going to do because you haven't, Keith, you haven't tried this one yet, have you? Which one? The, the low, the one that's towards the bottom. No, I haven't. All right, I'm going to move that piece of strut further away from the box so you don't have this problem. And then I'm also going to make it 45. So I think on the paper I made it. Anybody have that sheet in front of them? You know the assignment sheet that shows all the bends? Yeah. I think I made it on 30s, right? I'm yeah. going to change that to 45s. Okay. Because you don't have a 30 degree rim notch on your benders. You do all kinds of favors for us. Well, <coughs> you guys are just learning how to do this. I don't want to make it too difficult. Okay, real life, what would we do in that situation where this is so close to that box that it makes it hard to make that bend? There's two different things we could do. We could bend this whole thing in the middle of a pipe. So we have more leverage out here to make that second bend and then cut this off. Or um, Wednesday, we're gonna talk about some code, conduit, conduit bending code. Um, this is three quarter inch EMT. So I know that I need a support by code. I need to support this conduit within three feet of this box. So if that's the case, I did this little box offset so we could put a support right here. But if instead of that, I did this, went straight. out of there and then did something like that. What that code means is that within three feet of the box, I need to have some kind of support. That's 18 and a half. So let me hold you on three feet. So within that distance, I need to have my first support, which means that all the way over here, instead of messing with this box offset, I can put a support right here which could either be a mini, which would bring it up off the wall a little bit, or a shallow piece of unistrut for it to sit on. But in real life, that's how you would handle that. You wouldn't mess with that little box offset. But we made it work. I'm actually kind of impressed with that. You really 
this to the chair. Yeah. I will sign this and you guys can take it home if you want. Anyway, the important thing out of this whole lecture was shrink, okay? Because you're going to need to know that for, for your quiz. Are you confident that you could do that on your own or do you want to see another example of shrink using a different angle? that with you on here and then scared the shit out of me. Okay, ask your question again. Okay. That's called the rim notch. So let me pull this up. This is out of your course conduit or course content, then conduit. There's two PDFs on here. Hand bending conduit is a good one. And this Klein Conduit Bender Guide, this has a really good picture of the bender head. So, um, rim notch. There's three rim notches on here. So this bender has options for you to use um, three different rim notches. The center one would be 45, the one on the left closest to the front of the shoe would be a 30. And I'm not even sure what this one would be. Yeah. What I just showed you, what I just did was my bender had um, one rim notch, this guy right here. And that's a 45. So let's see if I can. The benders you have, the ideal blue ones, they will only have one rim notch, and that's that's for a 45 degree um, deal. So what I just did was um, this rim notch here is for a 45. So you would use a 45 for the middle bend and 22 and a half over here and 22 and a half. on this side. But since since I was trying to do this with a 30, um, I did 60 in the middle and 30 on either side. But I'm going to change that. So you guys are going to use this 
this setup for your bin. Um, let's do another example though. Um, I'm going to come out of a junction box. And there's my coupling. And I'm going to hit um, a wall over here. And this is just going to be a 30 degree offset. And I want the top of this where it starts to flatten out. I want that to hit right at the end of the, the wall. So I'm doing 30 degrees. I know that the height from the bottom of the coupling to the top of the wall is seven inches. Christmas. So where do, where do my marks need to be? Oh, and I also know that this distance is, uh, I don't know, 38 inches. So on my flat piece of pipe, where do I need to make my marks? So there's my pipe. This is not a saddle, so I only need two marks, but I got to figure out where this is going to end up. Thirty. We're going to bend this on thirty degrees. So shrink is going to be the shrink constant times the height. So what is the constant again? 0 0.27 times 7. 1.89. So about an inch and 7 eighths. Thirty-eight minus yeah. an inch and seven eighths. Yeah. Remember that the end of this pipe is going to end up a little bit shorter. So here's my here's my thirty-eight inch mark right here. When I bend an offset, is that is that mark going to move this way or that way? It's going to move to the left, right? So I need to add my shrink value. My first mark right here is actually going to be 39 and 7 eighths, right? Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yep. And then I'm going to come this way. How far? 14 inches. So this would be 25 and 7 eighths, and I'll go that way, 14 inches. The multiplier for a 30 degree is 2, so it would be 7 times 2 is 14 inches to the left, 7 times 2 is 14 inches to the right. You wouldn't. That was a mistake. Not 14. It's 39 7 eighths minus 14. So you could make a mark at 39 7 eighths and mark and measure 14 inches to the left. 
or you could do the math and subtract it and measure from the end of the pipe. Can you use the arrow for both of those bends? Yep, it's an offset. Um, on a quiz, <clears throat> what you might see is this is a 10 foot stick of pipe. I just bent um, an 18 inch offset. on 45s. What is the distance between A and B? You would add that to 10 feet? All right. So the pipe shrinks. So remember, when you're making your mark to land on the center of something, you're going to add the shrink value because the pipe is going to shrink. What this question is asking you is what is the overall length of the pipe after I make the bend? So it's actually going to be minus the shrink value, right? So what is the shrink? So what's the what's the multiplier? Uh, 0.41. Zero point four one times eighteen inches obstruction height, and that gives you seventeen point what? Uh, seven point three eight inches. So the distance between A and B would be ten feet minus seven and three eighths inches. Point three eight inches. It's about three eighths, isn't it? So it would be around nine feet, um, uh, four and five eighths inches. That would be the distance between A and B. Everybody got a grasp on shrink? Okay. Um, all right, I'll stop there for today. Wednesday, we'll talk about some code and conduit supports and anything else that you may need to know for the quiz. We'll plan on taking the conduit quiz a week from today at nine o'clock. Ethan, are you still there? Yeah. So make sure you're here in class on Monday for the quiz. Got it. Caden, you got that? Are you asleep right now? Uh, Will wants you to unmute your mic, and I think he called you a little bitch, Caden. <laughs> He logged on and went somewhere else. I'm, sh I'm just sure of it. Okay. I think that's it. Yep, I'm done. <laughs>